Uh, but we want to talk about, we want to recap the week that was. Mm -hmm. Now, Sam, I called you in here because you you present an interesting an interesting case. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your fantasy league right now. Well, my league is called the it's a Yahoo Sports Fantasy League. It's called the Hira. It's called the Termina League. Um, got a lot of my family members in there, some of my friends, some class of 2006. Um, we got um, 11 guys and one girl. In our one league. girl? One girl. My you allow cousin girls? Mia. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, my cousin Mia is in there. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, like, I'm right now sitting at 5-0 and in my fantasy league. So you're, you're leading the pack. I'm leading, I'm leading the pack right now. You know, I just had a huge win over, over my brother, over Anthony. A late um, game win. Late game win. Which Thanks to Russell. Think you yeah, which I didn't think I was going to win it. You know, I'm yep. happy to be 5-0 and right now. I mean, like, but I got a tough matchup with my Uncle Gary um, mm. this weekend. So it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see. But I feel like... I feel confident this week. And it all starts tomorrow. Oh yes. Okay. I don't have any tomorrow matchups. So. You don't have anybody going tomorrow? No. Okay. You didn't you didn't get JJ Watt as a tight end on your team? No, I don't have him, okay. no. Okay. That's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Uh you mentioned Russell Wilson. Oh yes. He's your quarterback. Yes, he's my quarterback. Now I find that interesting because Russell Wilson's not your typical fantasy quarterback. No, but he um but what why do you trust him on your team? Because with Russell Wilson basically he's got he can also run the football as well, you know, when I um when I scouted Russell Wilson when he played at um, NC State, and then he played that one year at Wisconsin. I mean, like, I knew about his running ability. I knew about his throwing ability. Heartbreaker even though he's undersized. Spartans. Yes, I know. Even though, for his, even though for his size, you know what I mean, he's sort of like a um, – I think he's a better athlete than Drew Brees, but mm -hmm. I just think that um, when you look at how teams are going nowadays with the running quarterback, you have Colin Kaepernick in San Francisco. I mean, like – but I just feel like Russell Wilson gives me that trust and gives me that confidence, you know, to win me a game. What's his lowest point total been for you this year? Because um, he's not a guy that passes the ball around a lot. No, but, you know, I've managed, man, in my league, lowest I've probably had with him probably about is um, 18 points this That's season. not bad. That's not bad. No. That's You can rely on that. Oh, yeah. He's been reliable. Now, he got you 33 points. Yes. Okay, and... If they gave out points for scrambling, he would have gave you over 100 in that oh, game. Oh, yes, Because he was all over the field. He was all over the field. He, I think he was the best player in that game Monday night. He really showcased his talents. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes you really – it makes me jealous. Why? Because Stafford can't do that. And that's the way I feel the league is shifting. Yeah, I mean, towards the league is shifting toward the mobile quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, well, you still got your Peyton Mannings of the world. You yeah. got your Bra Tom Brady of the world. You know what I mean? Like, um, but – you got a lot of these quarterbacks, you know what I mean? But you look at a team like Michigan State in college football. They got four quarterbacks right now that's playing in the NFL right now. And yeah. They're do are all doing okay. They're you know all okay. I mean? They're all okay. You know what I mean? Stanton yeah. played last week. You had um Kirk Cousins, you got Brian Hoyer, and then you got um Nick Foles, even though he was at Michigan State for a time, but um but they were all in um one um one dressing room at one point. Yep. Yeah, so that's interesting enough. Talk to me about those state quarterbacks because a couple weeks ago, and I got burned for this, uh, the week that Kirk Cousins had, I think, five turnovers against mm -hmm. the Giants. Yes. Four picks and a fumble. Yep. Uh, I had him in my top five that week. Um, so of those Spartan quarterbacks, because they're all very interesting cases, you got Stanton, Hoyer, and Kirk Cousins. Don't but, forget Foles. And Foles. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right, let's – Let's take Foles out of it, though, okay. because I think yeah. Foles kind of came, yeah, on, strong came on strong last year. Yeah. He was probably he was probably a top ten quarterback in mm -hmm. fantasy leagues. Oh yeah, he was a high pick for a quarterback. Of the three, Kirk Cousins, Hoyer, and Stanton, who can you trust on in fantasy? If you need a, if you need a guy, if you need a guy for a start, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's Kirk Cousins because I think because he's got the arm strength to go deep. Um, you got um. He can, he's a smart, intelligent quarterback. I mean, like, he's done magnificent when he was at Michigan State and also his time with Washington Redskins. I know I, he should have been the starter even with RG3 still there. Yeah. I mean, like, but I just think that I would trust Kirk Cousins with my offense, especially because he's smart, he's intelligent, you know what I mean, with what he's got. You know, Hoyer, of course, with Brian Hoyer, of course, he's doing – Doing well in Cleveland right now, but you got that Johnny Manziel effect there, and you got Drew Stanton. You don't know with him because you got Carson Palmer start coming back. I think yep. he'll be coming back. I think this weekend. I think. And Arizona's performed pretty well. Yes. With Drew Stanton. So there might have been quarterback controversy coming. Who knows? Who knows? When you have a defense like that, though. Oh yeah, their defense those things is good. Yeah. Take care of it. Oh yes. All right, now let's let's talk about top performers of the last week. Okay, who who's your guy in this week five? <laughs> who was your man? 
you know, I'm going to shock you here. I'm going to go okay. Pierre Thomas. Because, Pierre Thomas down Because he had a really huge game. He had 30 points in my league. I mean, like, he had a rushing touchdown. He had a re receiving touchdown. I mean, like, this guy, this, I mean, he's a sleeper in most leagues. I mean, like, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't play a lot, but when he does play a lot, he will come and kill you. That was my most impressive guy. You know, a lot of people are going to say Peyton Manning for breaking the record, but mm -hmm. Pierre Thomas is my guy. And I think, you know, the Saints are an interesting case this year. Mm -hmm. What are they, two and three now? Yeah, they're sitting two and three. They, uh, I think a lot of people were pretty high on them coming out, coming this year because you had Sean Payton right. back for another full right. year. Uh, you expect Jimmy Drew Graham, Brees to do Drew big Brees. things. Jimmy Graham. Mm -hmm. the curious case of the New Orleans Saints, though. Well, the problem is they don't really have that true deep receiver to the outside. You know, Marcus yeah. Colson was supposed to be that type of guy. Um, also, like, um, they've been, been splitting tailbacks, which is – Usually it does not work in the NFL. Usually, I mean, like it'll work at times, but it usually you got to have a featured back. I still think Pierre Thomas is the featured back there, but um, I just think right now it's a mess over there at New Orleans. I just mm. think that um, you know, defensively they're still they're terrible under Rob Ryan. I think he's on the hot seat over there in New Orleans. Seems to be on the hot seat everywhere he goes. Oh yeah, see when he was at Oakland, he was at Dallas, mm -hmm. and now he's out of New here. Orleans. Oh yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, let's um. I've had a few guys I've missed on, but one guy I hit on who's performed pretty well all year, Phillip Rivers out in San Diego. Mm -hmm. He's he's picking up where he left off last year. Is he a top five quarterback in fantasy this year? Yes, I do, because, you know, he plays in a really bad um, – AFC West, of course, is, um, you know, you got eh. Oakland, you got we got Denver in there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But San Diego, in my opinion, I think is the second best team in the AFC West because of the um, – you know, but but when you look at Phil Rivers, you know he doesn't have a running game, much running game. I mean, what are they on their I mean, fifth they, string back? They have right to now? throw it. They have to throw the football. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why he's been doing very well right now. And of course, I think he's doing very well for the for the. I gotta figure out who San, San Diego's coach is. Um, but um, somebody. Yeah, but he's doing very not well. Not Norv Turner. Not Norv Turner, but I think he's having a heck of a year right now. I mean, like I still think. With, if if he can get a good running game in there, it'll take the pressure off and it'll balance it out. I just think that right now Rivers right now is a top five quarterback. Okay, I agree. I was pretty high on Rivers. Mm -hmm. I am every week. I get laughed at though. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I get laughed at a lot though. Yeah, but I still think um, when I look at my top five quarterbacks right now, I would say um, Russell Wilson. I think is the. I mean, like get yeah, Wilson, Breeze. Got, Wilson number one. I think right now Russell Wilson as a fantasy quarterback. Wilson's number I should one. Actually, take it back. Peyton Manning's number one. Actually, okay, okay. I would rank two would be um, Aaron Rodgers right now. Okay. Three Russell Wilson. Four. Interesting. Four. Um, four I think would be Philip Rivers. And number five, I would, I would actually rank. Actually, you know, you, you're gonna hate me on this, okay? But I would, yeah, you know what? I rank Tony Romo number five right now. Serious. He's my backup quarterback. Tony Even Romo, Brady. number five. Even with Brady. Yep, right now. I, I think Romo in fantasy is going to put up more numbers than Brady. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Romo, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. I Romo, have a hard time Rogers, putting him in, yep. putting on the top of anything. Mm, yeah. Now, all right, okay. Another interesting name here before we go to our break. Um, Andrew Luck. Oh, we yeah. all know he's a great quarterback. We all know he's probably the future of the upper echelon. Mm -hmm. When Brady and Manning are gone, but in fantasy, he's been having a pretty good year. Yeah, he's been having a very good year, but still, I mean, like, you know how Stanford quarterbacks are. But when he, if he struggles, Indy struggles. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, the thing with Indy is they don't have a true running game, and you got to develop that wide receiver core. And I think they've done a good job of that. I think Reggie Wayne being there helps that team out. But I just think why I said right now, Luck is not a top ranked quarterback right now. He still's got to get a little bit more experience, especially when it gets in the playoff time. If he gets the AFC Championship game, I consider him a top-ranked quarterback. Taking the next step. Taking the next step, yep. Gotcha. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to get into the Lions and some uh, fantasy ramifications from that great game against the Bills. Stay tuned.
The Orion Lighted Parade is a tradition that ushers in the holiday season here in the Orion area. Families line the streets in the village to enjoy this festive event. But it wouldn't be possible without the Holly Jolly Folly. This year's fundraiser is scheduled to take place on Friday, December 5th at Golling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road. Enjoy live entertainment, a silent auction, a cash bar, and a 50-50 raffle. Food will be provided by Italia Garden. Tickets are $35 per person and are available at Golling Buick GMC. For more information, call the Orion Area Parade Group at 248-802-5521 or visit orionlightedparade.org. Hey now, welcome back. Second segment provided by... Provided by who? Provided by me. Sam. Provided by you? Yeah. You sponsor the second segment? No, not oh. really. <laughs> the Dragon's Den blog? Yeah, that's fine. Dragon's okay. Den blog. I'm also host of OA Now and also... Um, segment 3 is brought to you by OA Now, so let's hold yeah. off on that. Uh -huh. All right, so this is the typical segment where we get into the Lions. Now, Sam, before you start screaming like you do on our other show, listen now. The past few weeks we've been really just sitting here drinking the Kool-Aid, lathering up in that butter because the Lions have looked different this year. They looked more like a team. They're running the ball out at the end of games. They're in victory formation. Their defense is doing their job despite the Have lack you of personnel. Have heard of SOS? SOL? SOS. Oh, SOS. SOL, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> That's what this team is, being honest with you, because you got to look at the Lions, you know, in this perspective here that this team has fooled the city of Detroit <coughs> and much as anybody. For years. For years. This team, you know, they duped. were bad under Jim Shorts. They're bad right now. They struggled. You know, I don't have anything to say about this Lion team. Like, they're just, that gets me excited to say this. There's no, I don't think they're going to catch Green Bay. I just don't, I think right now Green Bay is the class of North right now. But back to the Lions, I'm saying is that when you don't have Reggie Bush or Calvin Johnson during the game, it kind of takes an impact on you. And, it, and I think it had an impact on Stafford. You know what I mean? I think it definitely has an impact on Stafford because he doesn't even throw it to. For the past few years, well, that's a problem. He does have people to throw it mm -hmm. to, but Stafford's been his safety valve. Stafford or Johnson's been Stafford's safety valve. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, chuck it to chuck it right. to Johnson. Right, but he's not there. He's not there. Problems linger. Okay, all right, all right. They've spent a lot of money on the offense. Mm -hmm. One of the big additions was Golden Tate. Golden Tate had a coming out party on Sunday. Yep. Is he finally a, a wide receiver two, a wide receiver one, a flex option? Is he a guy you can plug into your starting lineup and be confident? Speaking of Golden Tate, perform? Golden Tate is on my fantasy team. And how long have you had him plugged in for? I've had him start every week. Every week. Every week. Well, he's disappointed you the first few weeks. Well, they didn't use him. I haven't had to. I haven't had to. Um, he's he's done he's done his own for me. He's my number three receiver on my team. Um. But on Tate, I think he had a really. I think he's the number two clearly in this on this on the Lions right now, especially with how um, he's done. Um, no doubt, when you look at the Lions, um, you know you got to have Johnson there. You got to have Tate probably your slot back, and then like I don't know who their number three is. You know what I mean? Like basically, it was supposed to be Ryan Broyles, but Jim Caldwell doesn't have any trust in him. You know, I don't. I don't think. I think Eric Ebron's been a disaster for this team. Mm. You know, and of course you got Joseph Foray who's also hurt right now. I think mm -hmm. he's been a disaster. But, but right now you basically look at this offense. It's either Calvin Johnson, Reggie Bush, or or Golden, Golden Tate. Tate. Yep, or Golden Tate. That's basically this whole offense right now. And that's sad because I know they're trying to learn Joe Lombardi's offensive system. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think right now Matthew Stafford has them. Um, had that ability right now to adjust to that system right now. With Johnson being out for an extended period of time, let's say he's out for a couple weeks, can Golden Tate carry the offense? Can he be a number one guy? You know, um, you know, I think he can because you got to look at it here. He's had experience being number one wide receiver when he was in Seattle. Um, I just think that with Tate, you know, I just think that um, he has the capabilities of being a Calvin Johnson. But the key is, you know, but he's going to get everybody's best receiver, best corner on him sure. when they play him. So, sure. you know, I think he's got the capability, but I just think right now that, um, but I just think it's going to be a huge struggle unless the Lions don't step up the game, especially yeah. that offensive line. 
Tate would be pretty good in a PPR league, I'd, I'd assume. Oh, yes. Are you in a PPR league? Um, I'm in a head-to-head -head league. Okay, okay. Not sure what PPR stands for. PPR is uh, point per reception? Oh, yeah, I am, yes. Okay, I am. okay. He's a, he's a ball control guy. Yes, he is. You know, that mm -hmm. helps. Yes. He catches everything. Mm -hmm. So you're getting points off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, going back to Stafford, Johnson being out, possibly Bush being out, Bell being out. At what point would you feel confident starting Stafford in your lineup? I don't have a lot of confidence in him. This year he's kind of underwhelmed. He's kind of underwhelmed, but when you look at the, I mean, when you look at it, I don't have a lot of confidence in with 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 them. Johnson not there, with Bush not there. You know what I mean? Now I'm not sure what the status on Levy on um I'm not sure on Joy Bell is yet, but um, mm -hmm. but I've been hearing he um he could be really close to being cleared from his concussion. You know what I mean? It would be huge if Reggie Bush can't go and Joy Bell can go. That would be a huge thing for the Lions, but you know, Troy Bell's no Reggie Bush. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, you got to have Calvin Johnson if you're the Lions, even though, even though they um, haven't you had to use him the last two weeks. I just still think he's got to count for somebody, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. This Lions team is predictable right now, unfortunately, and it's not a good thing right now. It's predictable that their offense has been kind of bad and mm -hmm. the defense has been carrying their the load. Their defense has been carrying the load, oddly enough, Which especially. Is, yeah. With their corners, I mean, like they don't have any corners or any safe, strong safeties right now. Yeah, yeah, but the defense been holding their own. Been holding their own. Let's look ahead to 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 Sunday. Okay, we got the Lions up in Minnesota at TCF Bank Stadium at outdoors home in of, Minneapolis. Home of the Gophers. Hold the Golden Gophers. <sighs> Corderell Patterson prevents an interesting <laughs> or presents oh. an interesting case for for a fantasy guy. Oh yeah, wide receiver. He can also flashback can flashback, do a lot of different things. He can do a things. lot of different things. He hasn't performed this year though. No. You know? He was he, I drafted him in all my leagues because I thought, hey, this guy, a bit of an unknown. A bit of an unknown. Well, what doesn't help him is Adrian Peterson's not there because, you know, he's right now in a Texas courtroom. I just think when you look at Patterson, he's the one getting the most attention right now out of that whole out of that whole everything, because what Minnesota really wanted to do was to um, was have Matt Castle start, you know, but now he's out for the year. Mm -hmm. And then you got Cordell Patterson, supposed to be a deep threat this year, of course, opposite Greg Jennings. And then, like, um, that hasn't gone, th worked out. And then, of course, Adrian Peterson with his um, fiasco. I just mm -hmm. think that that problem right there, the Adrian Peterson fiasco, has impacted Patterson's numbers. Hmm. I think it's impacted Jennings' numbers. And I also think, you know what I mean? It's an interesting match because they got Teddy Bridgewater as their quarterback. He didn't play last week in favor of Christian Ponder. Mm -hmm. I just think if Bridgewater plays, it gives Minnesota more of a better option. Okay, okay. So sticking with Bridgewater, would you take a gamble if you needed to? Say your, your guy was on a bye week. Would you take a gamble and say, hey, Bridgewater's playing the Lions. Let's throw him in there as our starter. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. No. Okay. Because I agree. Lions got a very good rush defense. You mm -hmm. know what I mean. They can pressure the quarterback. You know what I mean. The I mean, defense like, has not been the same defense old Lions has not been the same old this Lions. year. No, this is a different knock on. This wood. is a different Lions defense. You know, but mm -hmm. the corners are going to be the question mark in that game. You know, but but Minnesota really does not have a true deep threat opposite Patterson, opposite Jennings. You know what I mean. Those mm -hmm. are the two deep threats that Minnesota has right now. You know what I mean. So. Kind of avoid Minnesota kind of, with with fantasy guys. Right oh now. yeah, kind of okay. avoid Minnesota. It, what um, possibly the only two would be Patterson and Jennings. I wouldn't start him this week. Right. So. Right. Real quick prediction on the Lions game. You know, in this game here, I'm going to take the um, the Lions have tend to have me fooled. We forgot to mention the kicking situation. It just signed you Nate Prater kick, this got week. Got a kicker, Matt Prater. You yeah. keep calling him Nate. Yeah, Nate, Matt Prater. There I you mean, go. Like, you know, when I look at this game. You know, it's hard to pick the Lions because of the kicking situation. Hmm. But this week, I'm going to go to the Lions this week by a field goal because I think Prater is going to have going to have to kick a 46-yard field goal to win the game. Okay. It'll be close. I'd be fine with that. Mm -hmm. They should beat Minnesota. They should beat Minnesota, oh, but you know, if, but if, they, if they don't, you can kiss the North goodbye. I agree. You lose to the Bills and you lose to Minnesota back to back. You should you, not lose to the Bills, especially if Jim Schwartz being carried oh, dear God. like that. I don't want to talk God. about it. 
When we come back, we're going to get into uh, some weekly picks and hit on some games that are big this week. Stay tuned. Hello, Lake Orion. It's Anthony Taramina, co-host of Between Taramina. I want to let you know of a new show called History Now. In it, we're going to talk about global, national, and political events that occur in our lifetime. We're going to also have guests and also have co-hosts as well, and also plenty of surprises. Catch us on History Now here on ONTV. Hey, 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 here we are, back in back in the saddle. Mm -hmm. That was your brother. He yeah. looked kind of like you. Kind of odd because he has his own show. I have my own show. You have your own show. You know what I mean? We're all we're know, all one big happy family on BT. That's true. Did you ever uh, did you ever see a show called um, A Different World? Uh, no. Eighties, maybe early nineties. It was a oh. spinoff of the Cosby Show. Oh yeah. Got a lot of spinoffs going on here. Yeah, a lot you of know? It, yeah. Fun. Oh yeah, interesting. It is interesting. All right, so we got a big week in the NFL. Week mm -hmm. six. Can you yep. believe it's week six already? Yeah, it's hard to believe. Week six. <laughs> Where's time going, man? I don't know. All right, so they kick it off Thursday night. Mm -hmm. First place on the line down in the AFC South. Mm -hmm. Down in Houston. Yep. Indy travels to Houston. Who you got in this game? I'm gonna go with Houston in this game because I think that their defense is very balanced. Um, if I have Houston on a fantasy perspective, I'm starting him. You got, I know he got luck in there, too. Mm -hmm. I don't trust Indy's running at, run game. You know, I just think that Houston's defense is going to pressure him by J.J. Watt. I mean, in a couple of weeks, they're going to have Javadi and Clowney back, and I think he's going to make a huge impact on that defense. I, I, mean, drafted, I picked Houston's team up defense up earlier in the year I mm. mean like but I ended up having to drop him after when Clowney got hurt mm -hmm. but when I look at this game I'm gonna go Houston over Indy you go in Houston hold and serve at home mm -hmm. hold and serve okay what do you got Ian fantasy fantasy fan 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 fascinating uh, I I'm gonna take uh Indianapolis okay I just think uh superior offense can't get the job done I don't really trust Houston's offense um <laughs> I, I think Adrian Foster had a huge game in this one also. Forgot to mention that for he, Houston. He, I'm not yeah. trustworthy on Indy's defense at all. I don't trust their defense at all. Fair That's enough. That's why I like Houston in this game. And That's they're right. at home. It's pr Houston's a bit of a surprise this year, aren't they? Oh, yeah. All right. Another matchup. Uh, another matchup of three and twos <laughs> for first place. Stupid Bills. Patriots are coming into town after putting the whooping on uh, Cincy. on Cincy. Who do you got? I like the Patriots because Patriots on the road. I like New England on the road because, like, you got to look at it here. Tom Tom Brady's back in this game. There's no doubt. I can see that. Um, the Patriots are going to have a. If you have Brady, I start him with confidence in this matchup. I, you know, you got Jim Schwartz's um Bills defense. You know, had a huge match. Huge game against the Lions, but I just, I just got the Brady's a whole other animal. He's more of a um, he's more of like a a play caller, play single caller. He knows what he's doing. I take the Patriots over the Bills, and I don't trust Buffalo's offensive situation either. You know they have Kyle Orton, you know what yeah. I mean. But I just think that New England's gonna find a way to win this game. Who do you got? This is interesting. The Bills are gonna be riding high on a road win. Mm -hmm. They always get up to play New England. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the line is. I'm assuming the Patriots are favored. Give me the Bills, though. You want Buffalo? Give, give me the upset. Okay. Give me the Bills. Okay. All right. Moving along. Moving along. Another interesting matchup here. The Battle of the Cats. <laughs> Panthers and Bengals in Cincy. Both teams are, I think, the, the country's trying to figure out what mm -hmm. both teams are. Oh, yeah. You expect Panthers to be good. They lose yeah. a dud to Baltimore. They lose a dud to Baltimore. You expect the Bengals to be good, be competitive up in New England, up in Foxborough, lose a stinker. Now they got now they're three and one, three and two. Uh, Carolina comes in. <sighs> Interesting matchup. What you do you know think? You know what? I look at this matchup, no doubt, but them um, Carolina. I mean, like this was a team I thought would do much better. They're getting Jonathan Stewart back. You know, Cincinnati, of course, they're always tough at home. You know, but you know what? I'm gonna take the. Um, I'm going to go with the home team here. When in doubt, go with the home team. I'm going to go Cincinnati over Carolina because I just think, right, even though i got Jonathan Stewart, he's playing on my team this week. Um, Whoa. But I like, um, I like the Bengals in this one because I just think that Carolina at Cincinnati, led by Andy Dalton, but I'm not sure about the A.J. Green situation. He was off on a – he got yeah. hurt. Big so, fantasy um, news so there, that's huh? huge fantasy news right there. So keep an eye on that this week if you're A.J. Green owners. But I'm going – 
I'm going Cincinnati at home. Close. Close. Over Carolina. You know, I got to agree with you on that one. Uh, anytime your star receiver is carted off on a Wednesday after practice. With the ooh, toe injury. That ain't good. That ain't good. So, I don't know. G give me the home team. Sure, okay. give me the home team. Okay. All right. One more here. We're going to talk about uh, our old friends, the Cowboys, against the defending champs. Woo! Up in uh, 12th, Up in man, the 12th land. man The Cowboys are 4 and 1. <laughs> the Cowboys are 4 and 1. Okay. They won they won on a field goal. They have a kicker that can kick. Um, <laughs> in the Battle of Texas against Houston last week. This is a game where you expect the Cowboys to be the Cowboys and, and show their rear ends and get beat by the defending champs. That's going to happen. You think that's going to happen? That's going to happen because Seattle's always good at home. They're tough to play at home. I mean, like, this is the 12th man. You know what I mean? They got the fans in there. Russell Wilson's going to have a huge game. Marshawn Lynch going to have a huge game. I'm not so on Dallas' defense. Yeah. I think Tony Romo goes back to struggling this week, especially um, – and, of course, you got Terrence Williams, of course. He's, he's going to probably either be meeting Richard Sherman or that will be Des Bryant. But, you know, if you notice, when you look at the stats, Tony Romo always loves to throw to his left. He throws a lot. Mm. You know what I mean? And Sherman plays on the right side. Mm -hmm. But there could be a possibility where Sherman and, um, just walks, just walks, the the right, walks to the field. Yeah, and like, um, I think that's what's going to happen this week. I like Seattle at home. Blowout. 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 Whew. I can't predict a blow, Sorry, but I got I got to imagine that they're gonna uh, they're gonna hold server at home. Mm -hmm. I got to imagine. All right, last game, last game. Let's get to it. We talked about it last segment. You mentioned who you had. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the road team, the mm -hmm. Lions. Yep. You're picking them to win on a 46 yard field goal. Yep. Can you tell me a final on this one? 27-24. 27-24. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some offense. There will be some, yeah. You think Minnesota's going to put up 24 on Detroit's defense? Uh, yeah, I think they can. They got Teddy Bridgewater, who I think is going to have a huge game. I think that, um, I think, you know, Greg Jennings will come back to life in this game. I think I expect him to have a huge game. I like, um, you know, I, I said the Lions because I think Stafford's going to find a way. I think Tate goes off for about for about another 100-yard game, probably in a touch, maybe two touchdowns in this Whoa. game. I just think that this is a very interesting game. I like the Lions in this one because of because of that game. I think Stafford bounces back. Weather might not be looking good. Maybe it could be stormy a little bit, but it's going to be warm there. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'll tell you about this game is it's a perfect opportunity for the Lions, Jim Caldwell, new staff, to prove that they are not the same old Lions mm -hmm. because – the Lions, historically, when they're winning, they don't step on the opponent's neck and take them out of the game. Right. Like good teams do. Good teams got to take They take win. the opponent. Yeah, they they kill the them when they can. Yes. They attack. I don't know if this the team Lions has could that. have done that with the Bills. They should have done that. Right? So here's their opportunity. Yep. This is their opportunity to yep. take an inferior take a bad team. Minnesota team. It's a bad team. Step on their necks, mm -hmm. hold them down the whole game, and get out of Dodge. Right. That's a really with a bad, W. Yes. All right. So it's not very good. I want to see Caldwell prove that. I want to see Caldwell prove he's a finisher. This is a great opportunity to yep. do so. Yep. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have here. I appreciate you coming in, Sam. Did you have a good time? Oh, it was a good time, yeah. Yeah. Get in in depth a little bit. Mm-hmm. If you have um, if you have, if you have Brian Hoyer against Pittsburgh, start him this week. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's your little that's Sammy nugget right there, week. huh? Yep. Yep. Brian Hoyer against Pittsburgh. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's underrated. Yeah. Under the under the radar. All right. Well, stay tuned uh, for some more quality programming here on Orient Neighborhood Television. Good night.